done a lot recently because oh, it's the same old story, I'm a bit busy at the minute. I've got these two kids at my age, and I know I keep going on about this, but the little one, like the six month old one, is like a right little fucker, right? And he's just saps the energy out of me, and he's a big bastard as well. Like he's, he's only six months old, and he's in one month old clothes already. Like he's a right big chunky monkey. So I ain't got the energy to sit through all these YouTubers at the minute, but somebody's brought me attention to the Jazzy Golfer Titleist Fitting, which we'll talk about in a moment. So yeah, this channel is just gonna be for vlogging and stuff like golf courses and stuff like that, because I enjoy it. I love playing and filming, editing, all that sort of stuff. And I know 95% of you people don't wanna see me play golf, but there's a few that do. And I just like to document all my sort of different courses I'm playing. I'm really enjoying playing different courses. I no longer belong to a club. And I love going to different courses. And a lot of times I meet up with people and play and have a good old chat as well. Uh, a lot of people say, why don't you play with other people? Well, I've tried it. And for those who not sort of, you know, know how the filming stuff works, it takes a bit of time and fiddling up and stuff. And it's not fair on the person that I'm playing with. So, and I hope that my video vlogs are a little bit different to some of the other guys out there. You know, I do the old hyperlapse and get you a, a sense of where you are on the course. And, and I enjoy all that sort of stuff, right? So this channel will be mainly for vlogs and other little bits and pieces that may interest you. So if it doesn't, I hope you can still stay subscribed. Just to uncheck the notification bell. Um, but I know a lot of you out there are not subscribed to me anyway, so please do that. Right, let's get on with the video. So it's been brought to my attention that the Jazzy Golfer has done a video on fitting, right? For tight list. Right. Now, to be fair to her, she has put paid promotion, but she has to do that because that's YouTube's policy. If she doesn't do that, she'll just get slung off the channel. And um, But she still hasn't labelled it an ad, which is breaking the British consumer law. Right. It clearly says that uh, she needs to advertise it, uh, put advertisement, which she hasn't. Right? So that's my first beef of this video. Second uh, beef of this video is that this is a, a lavish production. It must have cost a fortune to, to do this video, right? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm betting it cost a couple of grand just to get the cameraman and edit it. Probably more than that. They've got the drone footage and all that. It's very snazzy music. So clearly is just an infomercial. Now, uh, I don't know if you noticed, but she is managed or she works for Performance 54, which is like this massive like media company. You go to their website, they're like, it's, it's, it's run by a couple of guys from Surrey. And there's and now the one of the directors is uh, the guy that, runs Saudi Golf, so he's in, he's like involved with it as well. So Performance 54, they sort of look after Peter Finch and Rick Shields. Rick Shields has to give 33% of what he earns to Performance 54. But it's working, it's getting Rick, old Ricky Shields, you know, number one YouTuber by miles. Not just by a few thousand, by, I think his next rival, he's more than a million subscribers, which is unbelievable, so. <laughs> It does pay to go to, with one of these companies. So any of you peeps out there knows that I'm not a big fan of club fitting, okay? And I know like, you're gonna slag me off for it, but that's just my opinion. And I hope we can work out our differences and you can still like me and love me for what I am. But I've been playing golf for 30 years and I just don't believe that club fitting are for people like myself, like the weekend players, you know, just, just doesn't benefit us at all. I'm sure if you was like a tour player or you're like five handicap, I think it probably might make a little bit of difference. But even when you see them on TV, they're missing putts this big and they're hooking the, their driver 50 yards to the, you know, just so, you know, I think people putting too much emphasis on getting club fitted, right? You just need to learn how to swing the bloody club. Why would I want to get fitted, eh? It's a bit like a big fat geezer, right? Getting fitted for a suit, but he's gonna be going on a diet. He ain't gonna fit him, innit, in a few weeks time, a few months time. Same, same with me, I'm trying, 
constantly tweaking my, my swing. So anyway, we get back to this video, and she does all this presenting stuff, and the narrative really is that people like us should go out there and get fitted, right? <clears throat> so what really baffles me is, why is Titleist stooped so low as to get these wannabe nobodies to push their products. I mean, she's been, like if you read the bio on Performance 54, according to them, she's only been playing golf since 2017 and she's gonna inject fresh energy. So honestly, you couldn't make this stuff up. And she calls herself a mid-handicapper, like, I don't know if it's different for women, but she likes to say that she, there's no difference between men and women when it comes to golf. But I'm sure that a mid handicapper to me is someone like sort of 14 handicap, 15 handicap. She's nowhere near that. And uh, so she's really pushing this narrative and it's just all bullshit. Like this, she's saying, I get lots of questions. People asking me all the time, who? Who's asking her for advice? She's only been playing golf for a few years. Like she's the one that she, she congratulated Titleist for giving her golf clubs because they don't discriminate against, they don't do women's clubs, what well, they do. I've seen them online. So I don't know where she got that information from. So anyway, she goes for this test, uh, this fitting, this club fitting, right? And she says to the geezer like, you know, you know, I've been asked many questions and should we get fit? And of course, what's he gonna say? No, don't get fitted, it's a load of bollocks. You, you know, you're better off spending your money on lessons. You know, so it's just this lavish infomercial. Why have Titleist gone down this route? You know, uh, also she did a video with Nick Faldo. Nick Faldo's my hero. Like years and years ago when he was playing, I used to follow him, I used to go and see him, I used to follow him around. Like, he's more hero, he's like that tall, and I always remember, he's like looking at me, like a bit, because in them days, you could just walk right next to him all the time. And he said, and he turned around and said to me, I've got a present for you, and I got all excited. And uh, he had this bar of chocolate, and he, went, oh, and he just gave me the wrapper. He said, yeah, that's your present. I've still got that wrapper, I love it. But it broke my heart when I saw him doing a video of a jazzy golfer, and, I understand why, because he is now part of the Performance 54 thing. So they're like this big, massive company. They're all scratching each other's backs. But the bizarre thing about this is that she's not getting any views. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's really weird. They're really trying to push this woman who's very divisive and is always on twi Twitter. And, you know, she's bringing the game of golf to women and as I say, I don't, I've got no evidence to why Titleist um, are using um, people like her. Uh, I haven't got data how much this, how they're doing in sounds or anything like that. Um, it's, only, it's only anecdotal evidence. Like, why are they stooping so low to use these people? And I think I know the answer. I, I like to hear your opinion on this because, like, like I said, that they failed over, they didn't get hardly any views. People are not interested, are they, in like proper golfers anymore, are they? They just want to see your, your Rick Shields. I think someone said in one of my comments the other day that um, uh, they went to an event and uh, people, there was a kid talking about Rick Shields. They weren't talking about, you know, the proper tour uh, players. So maybe Titleist are trying to capture the market of shit golfers to fit them because it's big bucks i mean again i haven't done any research on this right so i am talking for top of my head but i'm assuming that you can't just go there and get fitted with your normal clubs i'm, I'm assuming you have to buy their clubs you know and whatever that's going to cost you and i know tightless clubs are not cheap are they plus you've got to pay for the fit and you're, you're there the whole day so it's going to be a what, a couple of hundred quid on top? I, I don't know. You tell me, you comment down below. And, it, and I know I've said this a million times before, right? But it's when you, you get, you take a few swings. I'm gonna do a little experiment for you in a minute. And you're warmed up 
and you're gonna hit the ball better. Even if you're swinging wrong, you get in a groove. You don't swing the club like you do on a driving range bay off a skiddy mat, do you? Comment down below, why are Titleist stooping so low? Such a, like a, a, a great brand, isn't it, Titleist? Is it tailor-made? Seems to be everywhere. They've got all the tall players doing well, and they using their drivers and stuff. Are they suffering because of tailor-made? Are they? I don't know. It's Callaway and Tailorway just like whooping their ass. It's, it's just weird that they're getting these low-life YouTubers to push their product, and that's where the money is. It costs thousands and thousands and thousands of millions to set up these centres. Do we need fitting? Do we need the jazzy golfer is the question. And let me uh, hit a few shots and just give you uh, 